Hi, my honeys. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute. We moved to our new home and it's been crazy town. I will be showing you guys a bunch of the updates that we've done in the home so far. But for today's video, I want to show you a DIY console entryway table that I built that I promise you if you follow these steps in this video, you can build it yourself. It's actually really straightforward, easy to do, costs around $200 but you're gonna be obsessed with the piece. It's gonna look like a luxury piece of furniture. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I have lots more new home content coming and you can check the description for all of the supplies that are listed in this video to make this gorgeous table. And without further ado, let's get started. And let me show you guys how to make this awesome entryway table that I just built for our foyer. <laughs> Here's the list of supplies you will need for this project and the tools you will need as well. I will link everything in the description, but let's get started. For step one, you're gonna cut a one by 10 by eight board to your desired length of the table. I did 40 inches for my table because it's a small foyer space, but feel free to do whatever size works for you. I'm also using red oak one by 10 from Menards, but you can use any hardboard or even select pine if you want. Step two, you wanna cut four four by four pieces to your desired height of the table. I did 30 inches, which is a good standard height for a console table, but you could do a little bit higher or a little bit lower to suit your needs. Each of these pieces, you wanna make sure that you're using the untreated four by four because these are ones that you're keeping in your house and the other four by four decking posts are treated and they have a chemical on them that aren't safe for inside your home. So once you have all of your four pieces cut, set them aside and then for the next step, you're going to take your four by four leg pieces and you're going to glue them to the top that you cut. Lay the smoothest side of your tabletop down so that you're gluing the legs onto the rougher side so you have a nice smooth tabletop. When you're applying your 4x4 posts, make sure you take extra care to line them up flush with the edges of your tabletop. This is going to be especially helpful because we're going to be adding trim pieces on later on. And if it's nice and flush, your boards that are trim pieces across the front and the sides will definitely be flush as well. After allowing the glue to cure for at least five to six hours or overnight, you wanna have two people flip the table on its side and then right side up carefully, making sure to keep the legs nice and sturdy there. And then you're gonna take what's called a countersink bit and you're gonna pre-drill holes probably two per leg would be sufficient. And then you're going to use three inch wood screws and drive them in there. The reason you use a countersink bit is to make sure that the screws sit beneath the surface level of the table. So you have a nice flush table and you could just use wood filler later to fill those holes back up. So once you have all your screws in, then it's time for the next step of this process. In step five, you'll cut two more one by 10 inch pieces to the height of the outside of your table. This is going to cover those two posts and make it look more like a solid piece of wood. Just make sure you measure the height on both sides. You might be off a hair on each side, which is okay because we're gonna add some feet later on. Add a little wood glue to the side of the legs before you put the board on and then use your brad nailer to sink one and a quarter inch brad nails into those leg posts there to keep it nice and secure. You wanna make sure with your brad nailer that you're shooting very straight and not at an angle so the nails don't pop out of the sides. Step seven, you're gonna measure from the bottom of your tabletop to the top of the legs on the inside edge. This is gonna roughly come out to be about three quarter inch shorter of a piece than the outside edge. So just make sure to note that. And you're gonna do the same process, add wood glue, use your brad nailer to nail it in. Just make sure it's nice and flush with the front as well. After all of your outside and inside one by 10 pieces are on, you're gonna cut an inside width piece of the four by four inch post, and you're going to glue it to the front edge of your table. There there are two reasons why I'm doing this. One is so it acts as a support brace so that the tabletop doesn't bow. And the other reason is to give us a surface to nail into when we put a trim piece across the front. As you can see here, I've just set another four by four inch post on top of it just to hold it in place while it cures for five to six hours or you can leave it overnight as well. 
Next, you're gonna gently flip the table over and you're gonna repeat the same process that you did with the four by four legs. You're going to use a countersink bit and you're gonna sink some screws directly into that front four by four piece to make sure it holds in place nicely and it also prevents your tabletop from bowing at any point in time. I did four screws across the front of the four x four post and I think that is sufficient to hold it in place. You don't wanna do too many holes because remember that's all holes that you're gonna have to wood fill later on. For step 10, you're gonna need two one by six pieces. You're gonna cut each of them at a 45 degree angle at the top and then measure the height of your table from the top corner of your 45 down to the bottom where the floor is. And then you're gonna add those pieces onto the front of your table by using wood glue and then your brad nailer to hold it in place. You're gonna repeat this process on the other side and you just wanna make sure you are lining up your board with the very outside edge of your table, making it nice and flush. If you did have a table saw, you could rip down these boards to be flush with both sides, but I don't have a table saw, so I'm working with what I got. And then you're gonna cut your top center piece, which will have two 45 degree angles. In order to get the full width of your table, you wanna make sure that you measure from the top corner of your table on the left to the top corner to the right, and that's your measurement for cutting the 45s. Once you have the top board cut, make any adjustments that you need to to make sure it's a perfect fit for the 45 degree angle, add some glue and nail it in with your brad nails. I'm not sure why, but this is my favorite part of the process. Step 12 is wood filling all of the holes on your table with stainable wood filler. It's not going to be perfect. You might still see a hair of your holes, but this is going to be a nice sturdy table. And honestly, you're probably gonna style it out with a bunch of things on it anyway. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. After I've wood filled all of the screw holes and the nail holes for my brad nailer across the entire piece, I'm going to use a 120 grit sandpaper followed by a 220 grit sanding mesh with my orbital sander to make it nice and smooth in preparation for pre-stain. You'll know the table is ready for pre-stain. When it's nice and smooth, you can run your hand across it and you won't get any splinters. The 220 grit sanding paper is always great to give that sort of really smooth finish. Then you're gonna use Minwax's pre-stained wood conditioner. I love this stuff. It's water-based, it doesn't have a strong smell, but it's basically going to make sure that your wood is totally prepped for stain and so that the stain takes evenly across the entire piece. Highly recommend you don't skip this step. It doesn't take very long to dry and the end result will be so polished and professional. I think it takes about an hour or so to dry, but it can lift the grain a little bit. If that's what happens, then make sure you sand again, starting with your 120 grit sanding paper, followed by your 220 grit sanding paper to make the full piece smooth again. It's also not gonna stay this color, it does dry lighter. After your table is dry and sanded, it's time to apply the stain. I'm using Minwax's Color of the Year Aged Barrel. It's this really cool smoky gray brown color and I'm using their water-based formula and I'm not wiping it off because I'm trying to recreate. I have the semi-transparent, but they also have a solid color stain. They were out of it. So I'm not wiping it off so that I can get a full solid color stain out of it. The difference between doing this and painting is that you get this solid color effect where you don't see any of the wood color through, but you get all the grain showing through, which is really beautiful. I applied two coats of the stain an hour apart and let it dry for 24 hours. And then I'm applying a layer of Minwax's polycrylic. This stuff is the best for sealing your stain and your table and making a nice smooth surface. I opted to use their matte formula of this. It does still have a bit of a satin finish. If you want it totally matte, they also have an ultra matte, but I wanted to have a little slick on it so it'd be easy to wipe and dust off. I will say Minwax's polycrylic top coat does dry relatively quickly, maybe within an hour or so to the touch, but I would leave it a full 24 hours before you move your piece around your house or into place just to make sure that that finish isn't going anywhere and it's fully protected and covered. And who's ready for the reveal? I think this table came out amazing and I'm super proud of how professional it looks and it only cost around $200 in supplies.